Hello friends, as promised, we are going to regularly upload the clinical case based discussions on our channel and in that series, today uh, we have this particular case. Um, I am going to approach this from the first prof point of view as to if it is a 10 marks question, uh, how uh, you should approach this case. So, let us see what is in store for us today. Um, a chronic smoker visited the hospital OPD with complaints of high grade fever cuff with sputum you know cuff with sputum it's a productive cuff so fever cuff with sputum and breathlessness and a chronic smoker so already there is a hint that it is likely to be some kind of a copd or chronic bronchitis or some respiratory disorder well but is the case related to the respiratory system let's find out uh, he was administered a parenteral antibiotic now uh, you will learn this in second year uh, there is oral route for medication and any route other than oral is parenteral oral route uh, the one which goes into the intestine enteral so anything other than that is parenteral here antibiotic injection was given and uh, but without performing the sensitivity test uh, you will learn this later on in medicine that uh, whenever you are uh, injecting a drug with uh, possibility of uh, hypersensitive reaction to it, then before administering at least for the first time, uh, you should perform the antibiotic or, or the sensitivity test for that particular drug. And this is uh, more so in the case of antibiotics. An intradermal test is performed and then uh, wait for some time to see whether the reaction occurs. Anyways, in this case, uh, antibiotic sensitivity test was not done and therefore soon after, the patient starts feeling giddiness. Immediately within a few uh, minutes, let us say, um, giddiness with profuse sweating and his BP fell to 80 by 50 millimeters of mercury pulse rate was 120 beats per minute so now initially we thought that it's a respiratory system related case but now it has gone in some other direction and therefore at first first prop level what could be the questions uh, asked on this particular case what could be the reason for this condition could you identify this so far I hope so because it's not very difficult to understand uh, injectable antibiotic was administered and that has caused uh, this condition they are not asking about his respiratory condition they are asking what happened after the parenteral antibiotic what could be the condition uh, how is the condition classified uh, what are the classifications you learn in uh, CVS and RS any idea anything that you still can think on this explain in brief the response by his physiologic systems or homeostatic systems in next 30 minutes to one hour this is going in the direction of short term regulation of blood pressure yes and outline the management i, I hope you have identified this case and of course uh, just one more time if you want to solve all such uh, cases and solve uh, mcqs uh, you have physio workout app and physio app you can download the app and start start using it all right so let's answer this question these questions uh, first question what could be the reason for this condition that has happened you guessed it right it is anaphylactic shock this is anaphylaxis antibiotic injections are often known to lead to anaphylactic reaction and that is what has probably not probably it has happened uh, after the antibiotic injection and particularly when no sensitivity testing was done prior to the administration of antibiotic so this is anaphylactic shock the patient is going into anaphylactic shock severe allergic reaction that would be the answer to the first question anaphylactic shock once you have understood the condition then the other questions can be written i mean the answers can be written very easily so it is anaphylactic shock 
and the first question uh, could be answered like this antibiotic injection it has led to severe systemic allergic reaction there was release of uh, the chemical mediators like histamine and srsa have you heard of this uh, slow reacting substance of anaphylaxis i'm just giving you a few examples here and that has led to profound vasodilation and a fall in blood pressure therefore first question answered what is the probable condition it's anaphylactic shock second then then the answering would be very obvious uh, how is this condition classified so they are asking about uh, classification of circulatory shock now it's easy you know the types of shock uh, classification of shock cardiogenic shock uh, it can happen when the heart is unable to pump the blood effectively it can happen in heart failure conditions uh, myocardial infarction etc a uh, hypovolemic shock that occurs after diarrhea vomiting excessive diarrhea vomiting excessive fluid loss from the body or hemorrhage excessive uh, or blood loss from the body then anaphylactic shock we are looking at this anaphylactic shock right now there was profound vasodilation because of those uh, chemicals being released and resulting in anaphylactic shock severe systemic allergic reaction and then of course neurogenic shock and septic shock uh, initially fever etc would trick you into thinking that was it septic shock but no it was his initial condition fever cough breathlessness and the question is on what happened to this patient after administering the injection so we have uh, found out the answer we have classified the condition then the third question uh, in that series was the most important one because um, uh, majority chunk of the marks would be for that third question that is response by homeostatic regulatory systems so first stage of circulatory shock look already the patient is in the hospital that means uh, injection is administered and the patient is going into shock it's obviously the first stage of shock and therefore uh, before any treatment could be even started his body's own homeostatic regulatory mechanisms will kick in so what will happen first stage of shock you know uh, compensated stage as it is known and in that all the short term bp regulating mechanisms will uh, come into play baroreceptor mechanism chemoreceptor mechanism cns ischemic response adh and thirst etc here uh, you have to judge how many marks have been allocated to each question if it is a 10 marks question then probably this part has maximum weightage 5 or 6 marks and therefore in brief you will have to describe these mechanisms first stage of circulatory shock uh, particularly barrow and chemoreceptor mechanisms right and the fourth question was uh, management of the condition how would you manage circulatory shock so obviously uh, non-drug treatment like head low position giving oxygen by mask uh, intravenous fluids so that the blood volume will increase and the blood pressure will come up and the drug treatment treatment of the cause so maybe you can give antihistaminics uh, to prevent the effects of histamine uh, glucocorticoids often have a certain value uh, in the conditions of shock they also help in the uh, increasing the blood pressure they have a permissive action on uh, catecholamines so it helps in increasing the blood pressure and if at all required then you can also administer vasopressor drugs uh, vasopressin and uh, as a last resort it could be even injection epinephrine but that's only a last resort uh, before that patient is likely to recover from the condition so this was uh, the case which could come in uh, in first prof exam as a 10 marks case and uh, we saw in this case how you should approach uh, and join the dots so as to uh, understand what is being asked and uh, how you should how you can reply uh, or write answers uh, to such questions